Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's always good to praise God. I know that in the last 24 hours we had a lot of things happen. And and we're going to uh, continue to pray for them. And uh, but, but one thing, no matter what happens in this world, is one thing that's constant. God is still God. And we always have to remember that. On the way to church, one of the songs that we used to sing when I was a little boy growing up was learning to lean, learning to lean on Jesus. Boy, that just, just some, it just, as it was getting here, and uh, lyrics, learning to lean, learning to lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Learning to lean, hallelujah. If we can just get that phrase in our mind and keep it in our heart, that's who we lean on. Learning to knee, lean, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I've ever dreamed, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Sad, brokenhearted, at an altar I knelt, I found peace that was so sincere, and all that he asked is a childlike trust and a heart that is learning to lean. That's what it takes. Learning to lean, learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. That's where it's at. It's not on man. It's not on my job. It's not on this. It's not on that. It's not on, it's not on just, you know, we look at family and we look at the, all that's important. But God's the most important. We've always got to look to him. We've always got to lean on him. That's where that power comes from. That's where the willingness to be able to go a little farther. In uh, 2 Chronicles 6, 9, uh, 16, 9, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless toward him. First part of that verse. He wants to do great things for you. You know, can you imagine running to and fro? I just need somebody to believe. I know I, I often say that a lot when I get up here, but that's where I'm always at because God just wants, it's like if you, as you read through the scriptures, you see that constantly, that God just wants the people to believe him. And I tell you, once those people start believing, then changes happen in a person's life. When they say, we used to say that song, a lot of times we, we'd be uh, uh, singing as we first started, and at the end of the song service, it would just go, yes, Lord. You remember that? They used to sing that a lot, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I surrender to you, Lord. You know, and I, I had a, a pastor one time, and he got to talk, and he said, he said, you know, he said, have thine own way, Lord. We sang that song, have thine own way, Lord. And he said, don't sing that song unless you really are believing that. Don't sing it, because then you're lying to the Lord. Have thine own way, Lord. And I tell you what, that's what changes lives right there. When uh, uh, and I was asked to do that, one of the headings was, what does God mean to you? And that's something to think about every day. What does God mean to you? Is he your all in all? Is he everything to you? And realize that you can't take a breath without God. You cannot get up without God. You know, um, I, was, I had to work Friday night. And I know I probably shared this before. But I had to work Friday night and take the students on a uh, night drive. And, and I was recalling one moment because we was talking about close calls. And when you're in a truck, I've been doing this now. I'm, I'm in my 41st year of, of being in trucking, and there's always close calls. I mean, throughout the years, I mean, I could graft it every, every it seemed like two or three times a year, I'd have close calls. And it, it, that's just the way that it was. But I think the closest I've had uh, recently was, was we was coming down Delaware, and the, uh, and, um, but rail tracks just south of TMC was going south, and there's railroad tracks. And, and they got a building, when the, when the train is moving eastbound, there's a building right on the corner, a little shed. So what I do, I have the students slow down, and I have them take the foot off the accelerator and cover the brake because it takes about three quarters of a second to take the foot off the accelerator to be on the brake pedal if you had to stop. So I always have them over the brake already so they can stop quicker. And I roll down the window and say, look, left, right, left, look. Look for that train because he can come. We don't have their schedule, right? And so we come through there. And brother, that train was right there. I mean, as it was right there. 
and the whistle may have blown before we got there, but I mean, it was right there and was picking up speed going out of town. And if he had to take the time to take his foot off the accelerator and cover the brake, that train would have got him. And I said, stop. And, and I'll tell you what, he just stopped. He didn't look around and say, well, Tim, why should we stop? I don't see a train. You know, what's the reason that, you know, he, he just stopped the truck, okay? And, and I'm thinking, you know, and, and we looked at each other, and, and I said, you know what? That's why I believe in angels. I tell you what, I tell you what, because that, that, they, they would have took our tractor, and we'd been going out, and we'd become conductors on the train on that one, because we'd been in the front. But, but you see so many times, God protects you. Sometimes, you know, we think, why, why doesn't this happen? God, you know, I've really been praying and praying and praying for this to happen, you know, and how come it's not happening the way I want? You know, God says, you know what, just trust me. See, if it don't happen the way you, I still got your back. I got something better for you. Sometimes in those disappointments, that's what we have to remember. If something gets disappointed, it does not work. When I first came up here, I had a job offer. I had a place that I'd worked before. And, and I left in, in, in good, good graces and stuff, and I came back, and, and I interviewed. The best interview I ever had in my whole life. Matter of fact, the lady seemed to like me so much. They had a second location. Can you go interview in the second location today? Sure can. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, this, you know I get this job, and, and I have a job right away. Well, what happened was they, they, they got delayed. They got hired, they, they hired actually out of Miami, Florida, was the world headquarters. So they had to wait on them to hire them, and then it just took too long. I'm thinking, you know what? I can't sit around and wait, wait for you guys. I got to go to work. So I went and got another job, and I was just driving up the street, just up 14th, driving up the street. And the Lord led my heart, just, why don't you stop in here, Tim? I said, okay. So I learned when God puts it in your heart and your mind, and, and, he's, and he's, he's leading you, trust God's leading. He's not going to yes. lead you wrong. So I walk in there, and I said, uh, you know, I got a Class A license. I can drive the big trucks. Been driving a lot of years. Do y'all need a driver? So, yeah, we've been looking for a guy like you. Now, this, this job wasn't even advertised. I didn't even know it was advertised. And I worked there. Then I went up, and I ended up working up at DMAC. It's been 10 years. I celebrated 10th year this year. And, and that, was, that was God's leading there, too. You know, and, that, and I look at, that's what I feel that God wants us as we go in today and praise God and realize that, you know what? Realize what God means to you. We look at, uh, you know, El Shaddai. We look at that. You know, is, is he your El Shaddai, God Almighty? Uh, some trans, Je Jehovah Jireh is your provider. What does God mean to you? You know, what do you need God to do in your life today? What do you need? Uh, we had the, the blessed, everybody had been playing for our daughter, Bibiana, and she graduated uh, from Perry High School. And I just thought, you know, to see her graduate and and we all know where she come from and the ups and downs. Not only did she graduate, you know, that was that was good, but she ended up getting scholarships. Who did that? She got scholarships, now she can go into college. And I'm just gonna praise the Lord for that, you know? So we just wanna thank God. We're gonna thank God. And, you know, and that's where God comes from. That's that's the very reason we should never ever give up on our kids, give up on our grandkids. We should never, ever say that this person, I know I say this a lot, but I deal with students, I deal with people like that, never, ever say you won't amount to nothing. Never, ever say that. How do you know? Are you better than God? You know, pe people think they get so high and mighty. I tell them this, because, uh, you know, I ain't afraid to speak, so I tell them this, you know. I said, can't nobody put a hat on God's head. Now, you think you're that high and mighty? You, you deal with him, okay? Don't you, don't you mock somebody. Don't you get out, because you don't know. That person is here for a reason, okay? And I tell you what, God's a grand chess master, and he knows what's going on. You know, one time I flew into Chicago, and, and as we flew in Chicago, they, they make a turn over Lake Michigan. And as they turn, then, then the plane starts dropping down. And as it starts dropping down, you can see the buildings, you know, the, the high rises. And as it gets lower and lower, you can start seeing cars moving, gets a little lower, and you can start seeing people walking on the ground. And it just struck me at that moment. You know what? I said, God, man, you know what's going on in everybody's heart at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I just thought, wow, so powerful. You know, if they're thinking good thoughts, not so good thoughts, you know what they're struggling with? Because sometimes the people that look, the quote, like they got everything together, you know, they got, they got more money, you know, than you could ever imagine. They got all this stuff. 
We don't know what's going on inside of them. And that's why it's so important when God says, you need to go pray for that person. You know, you need to call that person up. At least give them a track. Give them a Bible track. Tell them, tell them that I love them. Everybody doesn't know that. You know, we, we assume, we assume that, you know, church folk, we, we kind of start a normal life. You know, you go, you know, you come to church and your, your mom brings your arms and you grow up in uh, Sunday school and you kind of go up that kind of life, you know. But that's not for everybody. Some people may never sit in a church house unless it's a funeral or a wedding. I mean, that's it. Or Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter. They may not have that life. And they've been wondering. I tell you, in those dark times in your life, I tell you what, there's times people wonder, why are they here? I've seen that in everybody's life. Why am I here, God? What is my purpose? Especially when they've been going through something and it seems like the whole world's falling down. Like people say, oh, well, Tim, I come, I come to the end, man. I, I, I'm really down to the end. You know what I always tell them? That's good. And, yeah. and their eyes get this big. They say, why did you say that's good? Because you come right up to Jesus because he says he's the Alpha and Omega, the yeah. beginning and the ending. So you came right up to him. Okay? Sometimes it's good to get so low, you only got one place to do, and that's look up. Hallelujah. You know, it is time to praise God. No matter how the circumstances, remember, God loves you. He has a plan for your life. And there's not one day, there's not one day that God doesn't love you. You know, I always refer back to prodigal son. How did the father know which day the prodigal son was coming home? How did he know? I think he walked up there every single day. He walked that stretch up there every single day, and he was praying, God, bring my boy home. Bring my boy home. I love him. It don't matter what he did. I'm still, he's still my son. Bring him home. And that one day you can see he start, he walking up, and he sees this old figure kind of slumped down, you know, just walking up. And that father, that's him. That's him. I'm telling you what. They say, like, you gird up, you want to put a rope, and he's running. This old man's running. You know, and he's running out, and his arms are open, and his son's got, you know, I, hey, I don't deserve to see you. And it's like the father was just, no, we're not, you know, I don't need to hear none of that. You know why? Because you're home now. You're home. That's all I'm concerned about. Hey, let's kill a fatty calf. Put a ring, give his authority back. Put shoes on his feet because he's my son. He never will, was stopped being my son. He was always my son, even when he was far off. Yeah. You know, he wasn't thinking about things. When he was away from me, he was still my son. And yeah. you know, I got four boys. And you know what I call them? I call them my shining stars. That's what they are to me. Yeah. You know, all of them, they, everybody has their things go. But there's not a day, there's not a day they didn't realize I didn't love them. Because I loved him every single day. Like God engraved us on his hand. Can you imagine that? We're here every time. Hands like this, you can see him. Hey, I'm thinking about you. Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking about you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we're going to open this up for prayer requests and praises. Because God is worthy yeah. to be praised. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Definitely pray. Definitely pray. That's what the church is for. Yes, ma'am. We'll pray, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, but we'll pray for a safe journey to, we definitely realize that, yes, yes, we would do that, she. And, and uh, that's exactly what you need from the throne room of the Lord because there's a lot of wives when stuff happens. 
you know, absolutely. We, 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 that, that's why this message was so strong. It's just, what does God mean to you? Good times, bad times, it's always there. We was getting ready, had to, had to uh, uh, take care of some things, and, and BB was visiting and things, but one, we walk out, and this guy, we live in a big complex, and, and this guy was talking to us, has to own that black vehicle down there. And somebody had hit our car, okay? Now, we, we thought about that, you know, we contact insurance company. But, you know, a lot of things happened during that time, right? First of all, the guy didn't have to say nothing. First of all, it wasn't his car at all. But, you know, but he saw everything. And he got our attention, so I got his name, got where he lives at, so we got a witness that that happened. But I'm thinking he didn't have to say he didn't have to say it wasn't his car, wasn't his responsibility, and he came down. I said that's a blessing from God. Yeah. You know, we, we got to look at those things. Sometimes we look when God does them great big things. Oh, that's God. But sometimes it's just those little little things that we need to praise God too for. Whether it's getting a parking space or or getting a bargain or or whatever, just thank God for everything that happens in your life. Okay, because even when the bad things happen. God can turn them around for good. Amen. That that's what we always got to remember, okay? Because in His eyes, God is always looking ahead. You know, God. You know, when 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 you're God, you know the past, present, future are the same. You know, because He's absent of time. He's been in the past, present, and future. So He already knows what's going on. He knows where you come from. He knows where you're going. And again, I stress the thing that God wants us the most is that big word trust. That's what He wants us to do is trust yeah. him yeah. and say, God, I'm giving it to you. Yeah. I'm giving this whole situation to you. You know why? Because I know that you can work it out right. Yeah. I know you got my best interest in mind. Right. Yeah. And we always got to remember that. That that just was been on my heart. Said no matter what, God, that we're going to lift you up. Yeah. You know, there's a song they sang uh, in the 80s. Went up here. You know, when, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I loved it. I know you don't hear it very often anymore, but it's true. Just think about it. He was thinking about you yeah. at that moment. You wasn't even born yet, but he was thinking about you, uh -huh. you know. And he and when, and when you were before he was in your mom's belly, he knew you. He's got this plan. You're knitted together. Don't ever forget that, you know. And he's not done with you. There's a reason you're still left here. There's a reason for your life right now. Hallelujah. Someone else. Yes. Seth. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yes. Good. That's praise God. That's what it's about. It's about him. He can work out those things. You know, a lot of times I, I, I'll say, you know, you get in a situation. Sometimes you say, well, God, you know, man, that, that you know, th this is impossible. I don't, I don't see how it can work. And God spoke my heart one day. Tim, I deal in the impossible. I deal in, you know, what's impossible with men is possible with God. Never forget that. Is anything, I love that word, anything. Is anything too hard for God? You know, we got to, you know, some of those things in the Bible, we just got to have them ingrained in our heart so we don't forget them. Is anything, well, anything includes what it says. 
anything. There's absolutely nothing too hard for God that he can't do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, let's uh, uh, go ahead and stand. We're going to go ahead and stand. Take these prayer requests to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God. Oh, hallelujah. We lift you up today. Lord, we understand that no matter what the situation is, you are still God. Hallelujah. And we're going to still praise you. Lord, that you be with Tammy and Dan in that situation, Lord. Lord, we don't understand all those things. But we know it's in the beginning, God. That's what we know. We know that you said you never leave us or forsake us. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are the same, the same God, hallelujah, that brought the children of Israel across on dry land. You're the same God, hallelujah, that raised the dead. You're the same God, hallelujah, that can make a way out of no way. The same God, hallelujah. Oh, Father God, Lord, you transformed our lives, and you're still transforming. You're still working in us because you're not giving up on us. You're giving us a future and a hope. Hallelujah. And you are the God that healeth thee. As we lift up the lady's mom, that hallelujah, that the kidneys and all situation, Lord, you can turn it all around. You can heal because you are the God that can heal us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anything too hard for you? Lord, we know, we know one thing. You said you'd love us with an everlasting love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And nothing, hallelujah, hallelujah, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Let us never forget that. That you'd be at Pastor and Sally and the families and the young lady that broke her foot and, and the needs that, that was in the congregation that was unspoken. That you would meet every need today, whether it be financial emotional. You know, those traveling, Lord, give them traveling mercies. Lord, wherever they may go, let that light shine through them, whether it's at the gas attendant, whoever it may be. That you, you, know, you know what, son? I just want to tell you today, God loves you. Yes, Hallelujah. Let us be about spreading the good news. Let us be about telling others that there is a God that loves you. Hallelujah. For while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's a way back. There's a way back. And that way is through Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's always a way. There's always a way, and that's through Christ, that we're going to sing and we're going to praise you. Hallelujah. That we can come boldly to the throne. God, that we lift up these praise and prayer requests, that they're going to go far beyond the ceiling and go all the way up to the throne room. Oh, those lives that need to be changed. Lord, we thank you that, you that you open that doctor appointment so they can go down to the doctor earlier. Only you could have done that, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you today. We want to praise you today. We want to believe you today. We want to just get down deep inside of us, and all we can do is cry out, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Lord because you are so worthy of praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Good times, bad times, wherever I may. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. In the wonderful holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, if you'd be so kind to turn off your cell phone or uh, put it on vibrate, we appreciate that. And I want to speak about the, the, the vision. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have a vision. Yeah. This evening's vision was coming forth Friday night at Easter Gate House of Prayer. Um, Jamie's still downstairs. Jamie, do you want to explain the Bible to the kids over at Healy? Friday night? Or Suzanne, do you want to?
Brother, Brother Don, what would you, Don and Jason, come up, take the offering for us, please? Okay. Jason, would you be so kind to say a prayer for us? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Tim. Thank you. Thank you. He's always ready in and out of season. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hallelujah. The worship team will come forth. Glory.
we say yes to you, Lord. Yes to you. Yes to you, Lord. We know that we can trust you, Lord. We know that you are good, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Does anybody have a word from the Lord this morning? Does anybody have anything they want to share? Okay. Um, this is a reminder for myself. So, so this, maybe this message is for anybody but me. But a lot of times when we're so, what God's been teaching me a lot of is there are certain things that we're supposed to pray for, and there's certain things that He's already given us because the kingdom of God. When, when He says lay the kingdom come, you lay down. At that time that He prayed that, the kingdom would come in Jesus. But then Jesus, the kingdom of God, because of His Holy Spirit within us. So a lot of times.
And as I was thinking about the presents, as, as parents, as grandparents, it's so fun to give. What a joy it is to give. Right. But if you give someone a present and they never open it and don't ever find out what it is, all of that effort, all of that thought, all of that expense is wasted. And you're right. And we're praying for things that the Lord says, go open it up. It's already there. I've already given it to you. It's already in you. Because the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. Amen. The fullness. children here that want to go down for Sunday school can go downstairs now. As everybody knows, Nathan and Sally are with Dan and Tammy today, so um, I got the call a little late last night. So um, there are three things that I want to talk about this morning. Um, I have lots of scriptures on each topic, and we're going to search the scriptures together because I'm not even reconciled with what is going on on our church family right now, and I want to search the scriptures together and see what God has for us this morning. Um, and sort of continuing from what was started Friday night, um, as we were praying, I felt very strongly that there's a, there's a spirit of torment that has been afflicting this body for quite some time now, just tormenting people, continually tormenting people with physical afflictions, with relationship afflictions, with jobs, with money, with finances, with children, with grandchildren, with houses being burned down now. With, I mean, Dan's already in the hospital with kidney failure, and Tammy comes home and her house is on fire. I mean, that is torment. That is torment. Now, this spirit revealed it. We know its name. We can pray against it. We can pray against that spirit of torment. And whenever, whenever the trials, whenever the tribulations, whenever the pressure, whenever the tormentor, whenever these things come, I immediately warfare. I'm grabbing my shield. I'm grabbing my sword. Yeah, there's a feedback. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I don't know if it's a pulpit mic. I don't know. Answer, I'll turn off up here. Can everybody know if that's mic? Is it this one? Is this one even? Can you guys hear me with this mic even? That's the lapel mic? It's a, okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so this tormentor, it, it, just from how... My, my history with the Lord, once something is revealed, once we know its name, its days are numbered, and it rears its ugly head, and it tries to make one big lash because it's defeated. It's revealed itself, and it's dealt with, and we cast it into the swine to go jump off a cliff, and those mountains have been removed, and I don't know how to say this. So, so when the word came forth about these boxes, and as I was studying warfare, um, the word tribulation means pressing, right? Pressing. 
And there's times, I feel like there's been a spirit of heaviness, a spirit of pressing that has been upon this body as well for a long time, but I don't know. There, there's, like, like you said, a testimony is sometimes a test. There's an opportunity. I don't think God is testing us with these trials. That's not what I'm saying at all. But during these things that happen, it's an opportunity for us to trust God more, to understand more of God's goodness. When the horrible things in our life happen, it is when God becomes the most real to us, when we can trust him the most, when he can reveal his grace and his goodness in a way he couldn't before because our hearts are tender, our hearts are broken. And it, it, I don't know how to say it other than there's a squeezing and that's when either the good stuff comes out or the bad stuff comes out in our hearts because we are not pure in our, in our hearts. Our spirit is perfect. Our minds are still being renewed. Our souls are still being renewed. And so I don't know. I don't know. I, I just I know that God has plans for this body. I know that we are in the days where the outpouring is coming. And I think that as I keep saying, this is a place of opportunity. What are we going to respond with? How are we going to respond and as I was studying the scripture, scriptures about tribulation, it became very clear that we have a choice. When tribulation comes, we have a clear choice. We're either offended, we're either going to get mad at God, we're going to get mad at something, and we become offended, and that cuts us off from the source, or we're entering into a tribulation that births something for the kingdom and the glory of God. And it's so, if you don't know you're pregnant and the pains come, and you want to just stop it? Who wants to endure it, right? Who wants to go through those things? But it's the other side where the victory is. It's the other side where the glory for the kingdom of God and that testimony is. And God is with us through everything. And that's where we're to be, be a balm to each other. We're to be together through it together as well, as well as the Lord taking us through. Um, and so um, I, I thought immediately of Joseph, right? Joseph is an example of someone who grew up favored. He was a favorite of his father's. He was blessed with the coat of many colors, and his brothers were jealous. They were offended. They were offended by the blessings in Joseph's life. They were offended, and they cut themselves off from the goodness and the blessings of God that were going to come through Joseph, right? And so Joseph put in a pit, sold into slavery, ends up in jail. But was he offended? Did he take that offense that, that caused him to be in those places? It wasn't his fault. He could have he could have right he could have railed against God. It wasn't his fault. He was he was the favorite. It wasn't even his fault. He was the favorite. But no, Joseph understood and he ministered. He was looking for opportunities. He took the opportunities that were presented to him and he was faithful and he trusted God. He never got angry with God. And he he worshiped, he ministered, he used the gifts God gave him, even in the lowest of lows in his life. And what that created was an opportunity to, for him to rise, for God to raise him up. Not, not in his own efforts, but just in the gifts that God had given him, he rose. He rose to the point where he could redeem his brothers. He could save their lives. He could save the nation, not just his brothers, but a nation from famine. And that's what I believe, that's, that's the scope of what is going on with us. When these things come and attack us, we have the opportunity to affect nations, to affect big change if we can be faithful through it, we can be patient through it, if we can reach out to each other and, and, and not be isolated and be, be off where the enemy can just torment us. When we come together and get through it and push through it together, there is opportunity to rule and to reign and have authority over the nations. And I believe that that's what the Lord wants to talk about this morning. So um, Jesus is our ultimate example of spiritual warfare. And what did he respond? He, he faced a face with Satan. And it was, very, it was a short encounter. And every time Satan came at him, it was with something that was twisted, but it was the word. But it wasn't the spirit of the word. Satan was twisting it. And so just to know the word isn't enough. But to, to let the Holy Spirit reveal the revelation um, and, and the, the reign of the life of that word that's in us. Um, and so Jesus, with each temptation, he said, it is written, right? It is written. It is written. So my warfare is going to come from the words that are written. Just like Peter was saying, if I know nothing else, I'm going to speak the word. I'm going to speak the word in power because the Holy Spirit has dunamis power when we speak these words. 
So I have a bunch of scriptures, Sheila. We're going to start in Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to go all the way from 10 to 24. In Ephesians chapter 6, there's a couple of things that are going on here. Um, obviously, we know the whole armor of God and um, this section about spiritual warfare and putting on the whole armor of God. Oh, you're still sleeping. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore. How many times have you told us just to stand? Stand. Just hold still. I'm coming. Stand, therefore, having your loins skirt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness the gift of the robe that he has given us, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace, those are the words that come out of our mouth. When we're in trial, it's very hard sometimes to speak words of peace. But that's our protection. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, the utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly, to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak, but that ye also know my affairs and how I do, Tychius, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that you might know our affairs and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Paul was a man that knew affliction. Paul was a man that knew persecution. Paul was a man that when he came before you, he wasn't very impressive. But when he wrote the words that God gave him, and it's funny because a lot of his letters, he says, when I'm with you, I'm nothing special. I probably don't even have anything you want to hear. But when I write to you, I write zealously. I write powerfully because the spirit is upon me. And what I write, what I decree is spirit and truth. And so when Paul is talking, he to me is a perfect example. If you want to study someone and know the spiritual warfare, some of the most powerful ministry he had was from a jail cell. Writing letters from a jail cell in, in Rome. Well, he is awaiting trial and likely death. But he knew. Um, okay, let's just continue on. So, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, how many of you know what we imagine, what we worry, what we chew on, what we imagine is usually worse than what actually happens? We psych ourselves out. We zap our own faith. Because when things get bad, the enemy wants to remind, oh, it can get worse, it can get way worse. And then we torture ourselves. 
And so the word of God, when we pray, when we put our eyes on him, it silences our own voice sometimes. We need to shush ourselves up sometimes and take some authority over our thoughts, over our fears. And and I, I went through a season in my life where the enemy would come at me with dreams. Like when you're in that weird in-between state where you're not really asleep, but you're kind of just dozing and, and these vivid dreams. Like I would wake up and have to get out of bed and turn the light on because something was trying to strangle me. And these things were tormenting me. And I was like, Lord, what is going on? And, all, and, 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 and he showed me. He's like, the enemy can come near you, but he can't come at you. He can't touch you. And so, and so, I, and all I could say was Jesus. I was just saying Jesus. That's all I could say was Jesus. That's all I could get out of my mouth. But, I, and, and I, Michael wasn't in the room most of the times. So he was downstairs or whatever, and I go to bed earlier sometimes. But it was usually when I was by myself, and I would fly out of bed because some, I know something was strangling me. Something was trying to eat me. Something was trying to kill me, torment me. And then the next time, and so, I, and I just walked and I prayed and I put the blood and I'm like, enough. And the next time it happened, I, and so I don't know if anybody's seen that movie. What's the, with the blue people, the cartoony movie with the blue people? No, um, the Amazon, like where they get in the, the other, Avatar. Yes, Avatar. So those like tigers with the teeth. Have you seen Avatar, those tigers with the teeth? I saw something that looked a lot like that. I don't know what it is. Is that the same thing you see? It was right here in my face. And, and, and the Lord said, open your eyes and see. He said, open your eyes and see. And then I was like, it's Star Wars, right? So I'm going to get everybody here. And then there was like this force field, like right over the tip of my skin, this force field. He said, open your eyes and see. And this thing was breathing in my face. It was like snarling, and I could hear it, and I could feel its heat. But this force field, it couldn't touch me. But it could scare me, and it could torment me, but it could not harm me. And he said, open your eyes and see. These things in life cannot touch us. They cannot touch us. They try to steal from us, but they cannot touch us. Her house is just stuff. Tammy and Dan's stuff, as awful as it is, is just stuff. They were fine. And the God, God is going to restore to them a hundredfold of what the enemy just tried to steal from them. But I'm telling you, the tormentor, he is after us. And it is, I, I'm done. I know, I know you've been tormented, Rita, physically. And I'm t I, every one of us can go through. Diana, with your blood pressure, this is a torment. This is, this is a liar who is trying to deceive you into thinking he has teeth that can harm you. He can't. He can't touch you. So let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 9. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking around seeking whom he may devour, whom resist, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Nobody goes through this stuff alone. I am shocked that you saw the same exact thing I did because I, I, I thought that was for me watching Avatar too many times. <laughs> But I'm telling you, nothing happens to one person. That's why it's so important to come together and to share and, and to, to talk and, and look and seek for prayer, seek for encouragement. That's why we have got to get out of our boxes to be effective. Because when the enemy comes and he steals our, our he'll chip off our faith, he'll, he'll chip off one at a time, he'll tell you you're not good enough, you'll lose a job, and he'll tell you it's your fault, you're not good enough. But then God will restore something even better. A year ago, I thought my marriage was dead. Now I have something better. My husband is here in this house serving the Lord. Yeah. Even, even before all that, even before we went through all that, he wasn't here. But he's better because we trusted God. And I got to the end of my rope and said, I'm done. God, you do it, I'm done. And he did it. I'm telling you, he did it. He gave, he gave Michael back a hope and a love. And now he, it, I, I'm not saying I love it, but... He speaks word to me now. He, he corrects me when I need it. He says, Suzanne, let it go. Let it go. Because sometimes I want to chew on it. And I, you know, let it go. Don't let it steal your peace. Don't let it steal your peace. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I'm telling you, God is faithful. And he is a whole lot of noise. But there's other scripture that said God already plucked out his teeth. Those teeth, you can see them, but he can't bite you. James chapter 4, verse 7. It's 
Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Resist. Not going to go there. Not going to get angry. Not going to lose my peace. Our words have got to be peace because the enemy, I have a temper. I, I, everybody says it's funny. I know, Darlene, she's like, uh, her and Don, they asked me yesterday, do you ever get offended? Can anything offend you? Well, no, but I can get angry. <laughs> I'm not offended. I don't hold offense, and I'm not angry for about 30 seconds. My fuse yeah. is like this long. But I have one. And, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, and, and it's funny. We were talking, and I said that even my personality has just always been one of forgiveness, and, and I'm a loving person, and I've just always been nice. And my mom always told me I was spineless, and I let people walk all over me, but I just think it's kindness and being loving. And I, my feelings get hurt, but... Other people aren't responsible for my happiness and my joy. They never have been. And um, they asked me, and he said, well, did anything ever offend you? And I said, you know, I said, before the Lord, I knew that when you give and you give and you give, at some point you become bitter because no one, not everybody gives back. Not everybody gives back. But after I met the Lord, he filled my cup. Yeah. And I, I, am, I, I get tired, I get weary, but my cup never runs dry. There is always something to give. There is always something, an encouragement, a kindness, a word, a smile, a hug. There's always more because he is my source. He is my joy. And so there is no bitterness, you know. And, 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 I, and when I find myself getting that way, when I find myself getting agitated, my cu- I, I'm not filling my cup. I haven't spent enough time with the Lord. Yes. I haven't yes. separated myself out and just taken the time I need with him. Yes. Because I'm telling you, let it go. The older I get, and, and I used to be a people pleaser. I wanted everybody to like me. I wanted to be friends with everybody. The older I get, let it go. There are people that just aren't going to like you because they don't like anybody. There's people that just want to be angry because they're angry. And there's people that don't like seeing happy people. They're offended that you're happy and you're full of joy. They don't like your joy. But those are the people who need to be loved the most. Those are the people who have never met somebody and don't understand the concept of love and of peace and of joy. Uh, okay, where are we at? Uh, Romans chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. This is another long section, but Romans 8 is a fantastic chapter. This is a reminder. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 through 39. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. There are times we don't have words. There are times. Everybody keeps asking, what can we do for Dan and Tammy? We want to do something. All we can do right now is pray because they don't even know what they need right now. We need Dan healed. We need him out of the hospital. And we need a home. And we need restoration. That's all we know. And in the meantime, we're praying. We're with them, supporting them. And I'm praying in the spirit because I don't don't know what they need. I have no idea. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. We know. We know that God is going to work this for good. God is going to work this for good. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who he did predestinate, them he also called. He has called every one of us by name. And we need eyes of the Spirit to hear the other names that need to be called. Darlene and I met at work. And it was completely random that we even ended up working together. It it almost didn't happen. If Darlene hadn't just, for whatever reason, stepped in and said, yep, I'll I'll mentor her, I want to hire her, we should hire her, I wouldn't even work with her, let alone know the Lord. But she heard something, or she saw something in the spirit. I may not have even knew it at the time, but we need to, to what names? What names yes. is God telling us, whispering in our ear? When we meet somebody, we just, there's something. There's yes. something there. Yes. Do we listen and do we heed? You know? Because he's calling other names. Yes. He called us one by one. And he's got other names he's calling. And whom he justified, and those whom he called, he justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What shall ye then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 
He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That room is full of gifts. Such a timely word. I honestly forgot about that word until Darlene reminded me, but it is a timely word. We are surrounded by gifts waiting to be open. All things. All things. That's everything. Don't ask for it. Say, Lord, where's it at? Where's it at, Lord? Lead me to it. Show me. Where's it at? Help me open it up. Help me develop it. Make it part of who I am. Make it part. Help me understand. Help me walk in this gift. Not give it to me. He's already given it to you. Ask him how to use it, how to hone it, how to bless somebody with it. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or, excuse me, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, no, no, I, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors. It's time for us to rise up. Yes. Yes. Time to rise up. All right. Let's go to John chapter 10, verse 10. <clears throat> the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. Our church is named Abundant Life. We have been called to an abundant life. Now the enemy says, I don't like abundance. I'm going to steal. I'm going to kill. I'm going to take everything I can from you. But Jesus paid the price. He gave it all. It is finished, church. It is finished. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 29. I just whole sections. I love these scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 29. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I feel like this is where, I know I am, I don't know anybody else, but I am seeking wisdom and I'm speaking, seeking spiritual understanding. There's so many foundational truths that I feel like we're just not walking in. The gospel is simple, and Darlene and I talked about this yesterday too. It is so simple. Yes, it is. A room full of gifts, mm -hmm. presents to be opened. A room full of sin that when Jesus walks in is empty. It's as if it never happened. Yeah. I don't know. Oh my gosh. Whoo! Gave me goosebumps. The gifts are in boxes. You gotta break open the box to get what's in it. Well, there you go. Jane left. I'm going to have to share that with her. She saw those boxes. I'm telling you, it's a timely word. Those, those gifts come in boxes. They have to be open. They have to be destroyed to get the good stuff out. Wow, that's good. How long ago was that? I don't even remember. I really don't remember that until you shared it. Wow. Wow. Truths. It's so simple. God's truths are so simple, and we make it so hard. We make it complicated. We make it about behavior. We make it just open it up and enjoy it. Just love people. Just love each other. Just, you know, oh, so simple. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience. Now that's not my favorite word. And long suffering, that's not my favorite word with joyfulness. And this is something, whenever I see patience and suffering, joy is connected in the New Testament. I don't know if anybody's ever done a word study on this, but every time there's a scripture, Paul especially talks about joy. Almost every scripture that talks about suffering, because I have the Strong's right here of about six pages, every time it talks about long suffering or, or uh, tribulation, with joy, yeah. with joy, yeah. with joy with joy. That joy is our strength. That joy doesn't come from our circumstances. There's nothing that the enemy can throw at us to steal our joy. There's nothing that he can throw at us that's going to change who God is. 
Nothing is going to change his goodness. Nothing is going to change his grace. Nothing is going to change that he called us and that he chose us and he destined us for great and mighty things. But we give away our joy. We give it away. The minute, the minute we choose not peace, we choose, well, I don't know what the opposite of peace is, um, tribulation, turmoil. The minute we get wrapped up in it, the minute we start worrying, the minute we, we just give away, we give away our peace. We give it away. And without peace, there can't be joy. Because that peace is our access. I, I, I just think that that peace is the access to the joy. And the joy is unspeakable. There's nothing you can say. That joy is the rock. That joy is the rock on which we stand. And the peace, the storms, and, and I think in the last two months, I have said peace be still to about a million storms, I feel like. I just speak in peace to the storms. Peace to the storms, not just the weather. I'm not talking weather. I'm talking the storms that are coming. Because weather happens. But like Peter said, we have authority. If we can change the physical storms, how do we not think we can change the spiritual storms? Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Because with peace, we, can, we have that joy. If we, if we lose our peace, we lose access to the joy. And when tribulation comes, that joy is what helps us give us the strength to stand. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto, pa unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. It takes patience to get through to the other side where the birth is. Not fun for all of us who've had children to lay there and be patient and wait for nature to take its course. It's painful. It's not fun. It's messy. It's all sorts of uncomfortable, awful things. But do you even remember when you hold that baby in your arms? Nope. Go do it again. Because that joy that you come. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. <coughs> who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of the cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, he now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the gospel, the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, wherefore I, Paul, am made a minister." who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that with and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is this church sorry wherefore i am made a minister according to the dispensation of god which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of god Even the mystery which has been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching against, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. You want to go back up one more slide? Go back one slide. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ is in us. We know that, but we forget so easily. John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. We have a choice where we reside. 
in the world or in Christ. And every time we come to these situations, again, it's an opportunity. It's a choice. You can call it a test. I'm calling it an opportunity. We have a choice. And let me see. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Um, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may, may that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. When we find ourselves in the fire, it's almost essential to not look at the fire around us and not look at our own situation, but focus on the others. And um, I don't know about anybody else, but the darkest times in my life were the times of the most powerful ministry, powerful outpouring. Because those are the times when there's so little of us left <laughs> because our hearts are tattered and broken that God can do amazing things in those moments if we'll turn to him and ask for him to do so. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken, taken you, but such is, oh my gosh, I can't speak. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. There's always a way out. He is the way. He is the door. He is the light, and he is the life. And... Um, I just, I, you know, I just encourage all of us to pray for Dan and Tammy. I encourage all of us to, you know, we'll be asking them uh, if there's anything we can do to help. I don't know what their needs are right now. I think it's just all so fresh. We don't even know how we can help. But I just want everyone to just remember that when we go through these things, it's an opportunity for us to shine light in the kingdom of God. And this tormentor has to stop. When you pray, please pray for the protection of every member of this body. Um, there is such an angry spirit in this city right now. The violence that has been breaking out in this city is ridiculous. The people at McDonald's beating people up for a chicken sandwich, I mean, it's ridiculous. And this this tormentor, you know, I, I don't know. I, it, I just feel like there is a weight that needs to be lifted. And if we can agree together in Jesus' name, um, he'll be gone in Jesus' name. Yes, Ron. I, I don't have a conclusion to my message, so I'm looking at all of you because I think there's something that is stirring in someone's heart here that the Lord wants to share. I don't know if anybody have anything they want to share, but yeah, Brenda. Absolutely. Pray for unity in the body. Yeah, James. Let's, uh, let's just pray real quick again. Um, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for this church body. 
We pray for Dan and Tammy, Lord, that you would restore all that's been stolen from them. We pray for Pastor and Sally. As a mother, her heart is broken for her daughter and her son-in-law suffering, Lord. We just ask a hedge of protection around this whole body, that this tormentor would cease, that his dominion and his power is stripped from him, that he is cast into the sea, Lord. And we just ask your protection and your blessings to flow, Lord, as we break the boxes and enjoy the good gifts that you have given us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.